Yeah, today I'm going to show you an interesting case. I'm going to drag you into the operating room and show you a day when I had equipment failure with my FACO machine and show you how plasma ablation capsulotomy employing the Fugo plasma blade really saved the day. Uh, my first case went pretty well. Uh, there was a little issue and I was concerned about uh, the uh, vacuum on the unit, but it seemed to be okay. And here's the first case, and I make a small capsulotomy, and then I'm going to go up and slowly ablate uh, the capsule um, around the pupillary margin. You can go up under the iris, no sweat. And then I uh, impaled this, uh, pulled it out of the lens bag, and this is a pretty straightforward case. Okay, we go into the second case. I had a um, uh, floppy iris syndrome uh, with a poorly constricting, uh, poor, poorly dilating pupil. And I don't use, like to use those um, iris retractors. You have to make too many incisions. And um, Morris's um, unit is probably uh, the best. Um, uh, although I find that if I use a fugoplasma blade, you don't really need to do that. I realized that this was going to be a tough case. I was not comfortable with this patient, the way the, the head was positioned and the way I guess I was sitting. So I uh, removed the anterior capsule in sections. Here I'm removing the superior portion in your picture here which would uh, really be nasally. Uh, then I'm going to come down and ablate uh, inferiorly and remove capsule inferiorly. Now that to you looks like bubbles and coagulum. It isn't. What that is is uh, fracture. Plasma ablation is like taking a pane of glass and throwing it on the floor, fracturing it, and it changes the index of refraction of the material. And that's why this looks... Um, uh, distorted and opaque. It's not coagulated. It's like fracturing glass. That's why we call it plasma ablation capsulotomy. So now I've um, made this large. I just had this feeling this was going to be a tough case. So I wanted to be able to impale this nucleus, pull it out of the lens bag, and uh, push some viscoelastic behind the nucleus, crack it, and do everything in the visual access, but uh, that wasn't the case because um, although I had a little hiccuping with the FACO unit in the first case, this case turned out to be a disaster. And I um, actually uh, went into the anterior chamber and uh, got no substantial vacuum whatsoever even before um, uh, I... Um, started fakoing the uh, the lens. So we changed the cassette and uh, went back in with a whole new apparatus. We looked it over and it should have worked, but guess what? It did work a little better, but it didn't work very well. And uh, here's a patient that's not a real healthy patient either with a um, a uh, pretty tough eye, as you can see here. Um, and yet, I'm going to be able to uh, safely uh, get through this case. Actually, I felt very comfortable because with the Fugo Plasma Blade and the uh, ability to ablate, you can uh, do things that you just can't do with any other technique. Since I made this a 7 to 8 millimeter capsulotomy, I'm now going to try to... Um, uh, impale this nucleus and not having a great deal of success. I had actually tried it um, in the chamber and I did get some vacuum and we turned the vacuum up and uh, we're starting to get some vacuum with the tip. Remember the cassette was changed and I'm getting just enough to uh, get a little maneuvering but this isn't the way things normally react with um, a very high vacuum that I'm using here. So what I'm doing is I'm spinning this nucleus around and I'm trying to engage and capture this nucleus with my FACO tip. Pull it out a little bit uh, away from that uh, posterior capsule. Now I'm spinning it around with the FACO tip 
And again, I'm still comfortable. There, there it's starting to uh, vacuum. And uh, I'm going to try again. There it didn't do so well. And now I'm putting the viscoelastic cannula up under the iris. Now I'm pushing the nucleus around, maneuvering it around. Okay, there I get some more capture. Now I'm going to try to go behind the iris. Oh, I slip it behind the iris. I have a little bit of capture on this nucleus, and now I'm squirting viscoelastic back, which is going to push, push the nucleus forward and push the posterior capsule backward. Now I'm pretty comfortable, even though I'm getting very sloppy, intermittent, and um, unreliable FACO. I'm going to go in with the chopper. I'm going to crack this nucleus. And um, this pupil was horrible, but since I pull this thing up in the iris plane, you can, there I had some vacuum uh, in the iris plane. Here I'm trying to vacuum. You see it's not even nibbling, bar barely nibbling at this. A piece of nucleus right here, but I'm pushing it uh, uh, towards the tip whenever I get a chance and uh, nibbling away um, the best I can with the vacuum up high. And I'm slowly and I'm being patient. And again, I'm still very comfortable because I'm in control. Everything that I'm doing is right in the center of the pupil. So I uh, was able to. Uh, it took a little longer, but I was able to FACO the nucleus, FACO it safely, um, then proceed ahead with um, uh, cleaning the capsule with IA, putting the lens in, and this patient did extremely well. Now, just imagine if you tried to manage this case um, with um, a capsule orexis. What are you going to do? Revise the capsule erexis? You're not going to do a capsule erexis under the iris. Well, you can do that very easily using the Fugo plasma blade. You can make large uh, capsule out of these. So, just wanted to show you here that uh, uh, plasma ablation capsule otomy with the Fugo plasma blade really gives you a great deal of versatility to manage the difficult cases even in unforeseen circumstances, such as equipment failure, which we, we had here today. Luckily, the uh, FACO was uh, um, responding reasonably well. However, um, 